for the introduction host. Um, let me share my screen first. Um, let me see. Okay. So, hi everyone. It's it's good to see everyone here virtually, even though that um, I really personally I personally really miss like face to face um events, but. This is also a great opportunity for everyone to connect, especially with um, people outside again, the Oro, they might want to join um, GGG events. So this is a perfect avenue for us. So yeah, my, my keynote is building connection with your community. So as mentioned um, earlier. So when did I start um, being like the community manager? So how did I start being like a volunteer up to now being a community manager? So this was me before. It's very different from who I am right now, as you can see. There was like a, I was like a few pounds um, lighter that time. But this was my first ever event that um, I was a volunteer. This was um, DevFest Cagayan de Oro 2013. So I was a third year college student at the time. And this was very new to me. So I didn't know um, what, what GDG was. Why, is, why does Google have this event? So, But the thought of having events like reaching out to people like having talks um introducing new technologies is really new to me so i hopped on the volunteering wagon and this is where i started um fast forward four years later in 2017 i was able to join google io in california in mountain view california where the google headquarters are, is along with ate josan our founder for gg again the Aro. so we were um, blessed enough with the opportunity to join there and watch the actual I.O. In, in our very own eyes. So we got to see like Sundar Pichai, their um, tech leads, the mobile leads. And then we also got to network from everyone around the world, like from France, from America, from Pakistan. So basically everyone who was able to join the I.O. there. And after the, after the Google I.O., I was also... Um, best enough to join the GDG Saya Summit in Singapore. So this is the Google headquarters in Singapore. And I got to join there with other um, community managers from Cebu, um, Zamboanga, Bacolod, Manila. So we were there to have like a sort of like a strategic planning for, for, the, for the organizers only in the Saya area. So it was also a really fun experience. And this was actually the, the last um, summit that I got to attend to. So that isn't possible. The journey that I had, that I shared earlier, it won't be possible without the community. So this was just like a handful of the events that I joined as a volunteer and also as an organizer. So maybe you might have um, familiar faces there. Um, you might be there if, if you're a regular um, participant in our events. So this was still starting in Dev Day. This was in 2012 up to 2019, where we had our last physical face-to-face -face, um, event, which was in 2019. So th this won't be possible without the community in, in general. Aside also from GDG, I also was a program director for Syntactic Pink. So this was a exclusive um, women-led um, community in Syntactic Pink. So uh, we also had like events uh, catered only to women. So it was also a community event. We had like um, talks about AI, um, UX UI, machine learning, um, robotics. So anything around the hood as long as we encourage women to pursue into STEM and science and technology. So how do we build an engaging community? So this, these things that I'm about to share are the things that I've personally experienced myself and I, I want to share to you guys on how do we build an engaging community. So first off, we need to stay connected. So keep in touch with your community for announcements, updates, or even just che um, simple check-ins. And also consider which tools are dominantly used by your community. So it's not a community if you don't talk to them, right? It's not a community if you don't engage with them. So it's very important that you have online platforms for everyone to join, for everyone to get to hang out with, to talk, to comment, or even like to have like a group call. So it's very important. And also the tools that you're going to use 
is also very important depending on your country, depending on your target target audience. So for example, we're in the Philippines, especially um, in Cagayan de Oro. So in the Philippines, the dominant um, social media platform tool is Facebook. So it's very important that you also have a Facebook page for everyone to to like, follow, and even like, communicate with, with the organizers and also with the fellow um, members. So in GDG Cagayan de Oro, we have three tools or three platforms that you could join. So first off is Facebook. This is where we mainly announce DevFest or um, past events, um, like check-ins or even like updates in the, in the Google ecosystem. So we post updates here. Next, we have Discord. If you're able to join our Discord community, we also post announcements there. Um, you can also chat with fellow um, Kadevs. That's what we call our, our members there, our Kadevs. So you can also contact them. You can also chat with them there. There are also like various channels that you could have. There's also um, announcements, hiring ads, um, technical, technical concerns you could also ask there. And lastly, Bevy. So Bevy is quite new. This is like the official platform that the DevRel community at Google requires us to use. So everyone here is also welcome to join. We already have like 157 group members in our community. So if you want to register, you also want to view some announcements there, past events, um, a little info about our organizers, you can also see it in Bevy. So it's important that we won't limit to one social media platform that like in GDG Cagayan de Oro, we have three. So maybe there are people who are not in Facebook, but are in Discord, or they're also in Twitter, or they're also in Instagram. So you need to research who your target market is or who your target audience is, and then have like the community there, have like a social media platform. Next is collaborate with other communities. So these are like the past tech communities that we were able to collaborate with. We have ITGX, Women Tech Makers, Developer Student Clubs, Cloud Manila, PyChada, DevCon, Django Girls, Syntactics Pink, the ICT, and RoboGals. So connecting with other um, communities gives more opportunities to expand your network and collaborate with other people who share the same passion as you in, in technology. So when, when collaborating with other um, communities, they do have different niches, they don't have different target audience. So you are you are collaborating or you are expanding your network more. Like for example, in Women Tech Makers, Django Girls, um, Syntactics Pink, and RoboGals, they're a women-led event, so they cater to women. So once you have um an event for women or you're like you want to invite every every woman to join also your events, you get to tap them or you could also um have them as speakers in your event. With PyChada, this is like um, for, for the Python community. So if you have like a topic that um, is focused on Python, you could get a speaker from there. So it, it all boils down to having like more networks and even gaining new friends. So I met a lot of new friends with the different com tech communities that I got to um, join and collaborate with. So it's a really good um, experience for everyone. Next is reach out to neighboring areas. So in, since before, um, we make an extra effort to reach out to organizations and schools in neighboring areas to bring your community closer to those who wish to join but are unable to. So here are a few examples. We were able to have a IO extended roadshow in Iligan and Hasaan last 2018. So we, us as a team, we had a roadshow from from in our neighboring areas, like in Iligan, Panaon, Hasaan, Bukidnon. And then we tapped with um, schools and universities, those who wish to collaborate with us, because we also have like a subchapter in Bukidnon and in Iligan. So we got to, to collaborate with them in creating the IO Extended Roadshow, because we, we do have an IO Extended in Cagayan de Oro. But unfortunately, there will always be circumstances where some people might not be able to join in Cagayan de Oro. So that's why we bring the event to them. So that's why we have the IO Extended Roadshow. We also have um, two events in, in Hingoog, which is the Campus Roadshow in 2017. And then we also had the IO Extended Roadshow in Hingoog as well in 2018. And then lastly, in 2019, 
um, they were able to join the extended roadshow in Bukidnon and also in Panaon. So we went far and wide, <laughs> reaching out to Panaon to, just to have the event so that everyone can, can join and experience the fun in having a, a community event. Next, this is very important. We need to provide a safe and respectful, uh, respectful place for everyone. So in GDG, in the whole GDG community worldwide, there's always a code of conduct for everyone to practice, to avoid discrimination, to avoid um, racism, colorism, and especially in this generation, in this year right now, we are very sensitive to that. And it's very important for us to make sure that everyone is welcome, make sure that everyone is safe, make sure that everyone is not offended by, by their race, by their color. So um, we do have um, our code of conduct as well. So this is from the GDG community um, code of conduct page. So we don't tolerate everyone who is um, discriminating by religion, appearance, age, um, race, uh, military status, body size, age, um, gender expression. So if we see someone, especially in, in a face-to-face -face event or even in, in the virtual um, um, events, if we see someone that is disturbing or is um, offending anyone, automatically we kick them out of the community because we don't tolerate that kind of um, behavior. Next is talk to the right mentors. Talk with community managers that have significant experience in the industry. They can also help you build your community from planning to implementation. So I didn't start like as an organizer. So there was always someone who is um, the lead, like Ate Josan. So she was my, my mentor in building the community as long as with Stella. So you also need to pick the right mentor, the mentor who will guide you, who will um, keep you in loop with the right choices, who will um, assist you in creating the, the community or in building the community as a whole. Next, if you, if you talk to the right mentors, you also need to give back to the community because that's what um, a community is all about, giving back to the people. So you have to be the right mentor as well. So... Once you have like established the, um, the community and then you want to um, have another founder or sorry, um, another community manager or you want to train someone and you think that this person has good potential, this person can level up. So you as uh, already as an organizer or has been in the, in, in the community for a few years, you have to train someone as well and you have to be the right mentor. Or even let's say there's someone who approaches you and, you'll, and wants to create a community of, of their own. So be the right person that they can talk to, be the right person that can um, help them build their own community as well. So this is a um, quote from Bob Proctor. He's, a, a, he's an author. Um, a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you see in yourself and helps bring it out of you. So um, being a mentor, you need to see the, uh, the possibilities of the person, the ability of the person, and you can't just um, mentor uh, everyone. So you have to see if this someone is committed, this person is patient and has the motivation to build this community, then be the right mentor for them. Next is be committed and be patient. The, the community tested us uh, a lot of times already. There's always events that have like technical difficulties. There are last minute changes, last minute cancellations. So once you create a community, once you build a community, you have to have com um, you have to be committed and you have to be patient. There will also be times where, there are people with different personalities that you need to adjust, especially if you're already the lead organizer or the lead member. And then there will also be times when you feel like giving up because uh, building this community is hard. Building this community is, is impossible. There will be, there will be um, thoughts that will come into your mind like that. But you have to remember why you created the community in the first place. So if you're building the community with the right intentions, you want to help people, you want to reach out to people, you want to um, guide them in their careers. So it's all in the right mindset. 
because if you have the perfect mindset, if you have the right mindset for building the community, then being committed and patient is not a problem at all. However, if you have like different intentions, if you have like bad intentions, then there might be something wrong that will go along the way. Next is um, always have a backup plan. So there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So you can have plan A, you can have plan B, you could also have to have plan Z. So um, especially in face-to-face in -face events, there will always be challenges like, there was, there was one time where there was no electricity. There was another time where the speaker was late. Um, there was also another time that there were creatives that, um, or like designs or posters that weren't finished on time. So you, you need to create backup plans. Like, okay, what if this happens? What are we going to do? What if there will be um, power interruption? What are we going to do? So it's best to always be prepared because this is one thing that we've actually experienced for the past eight years, eight to nine years. It's to always have a backup plan. Next is, of course, you need to listen to your community. So how do you listen to them? Request for feedback after every event in order for you to have a gauge as to how to improve your event. Keep your inbox open for requests and concerns. Maybe there might be questions or clarifications that your um, participants might have. So keep your inbox open and respond to them. Polls and surveys. So there was um, a few times before where we asked um, what kind of events or topics that you want us to have. So it's also important to have that. Raise urgent matters immediately. If there are things that needs to be addressed immediately, raise them before it gets worse and practice empathy. So this is very important that if someone is, feels bad or someone is having a hard time, especially when there are like code labs, if you see someone who is struggling, if you see someone who is um, having a hard time with their, with their activity, so you have to be empathetic and help out uh, them. So it's not a community if you don't listen to your community. So that's what building a, con uh, a great community is about and building a connection with them. So this is last, but it's really not important. You have to give them freebies or swags as a token of appreciation for their support. Um, way before the start of GDG, there weren't much. There, we didn't, we didn't um, give a lot but it's important to have them because it's also a way of saying thank you. It's also a way of saying, um, I appreciate you for supporting the community, but this is, this is not required. Okay, we, you don't need to, to pressure your community to have this. It only depends on the resources that you have. Even like giving co a cup of coffee or even like snacks, just, a lit just even the little things, it does matter a lot to them and people will appreciate you for that. So... It all depends on, on even just like stickers. That's really okay for them. People will be really happy about that. So that's what's, that's what's important, making the community happy and engaged. So it won't be perfect the first time. Even the first year, the DevFest 2013, the event that um, I first volunteered, I was reprimanded like big time. So it won't be perfect um, at the first time. So don't expect that everything will go smoothly. And the, um, at the first event you're going to organize because there will be challenges. There will be realities along the way. But if you surround yourself with the right people, the right volunteers, the right organizers, it would be worthwhile. It would be um, a great journey, a great experience for you. Okay? So I'm just going to end this talk with this quote that, that's been stuck with my head for a few weeks now. So every connection can build a community, but not all communities can build a connection. So if you have a connection with, with a group of people, let's say co-developers who share like a same technology or have the same interests of work. So if you have this connection and you have this mindset to help other people to share the word about this technology, you can build a community out of that. But if you create a community with a with the intention like for 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 yourself like i just wanted to build a community so that um i could pirate people or i could um i could network people i could like any any intention that is not of the good side 
So you won't build a connection out of that. Like you're just building a community for the sake of having a community. So that's not a good community to have, and it will most likely not um, grow, or it would not stay long in the in the industry. So yeah, I want everyone also to to keep this quote in mind. And once you build your own community, you have to keep in mind that. You are with your um. You are making it with good intentions. You are making it with the right people. You have a right mentor with them, and lastly, you have to be committed and patient in creating it. So yeah, that's pretty much it of my of my talk. I hope everyone had an idea or uh, has taken something from from the talk that I that I had, and I'm very excited. Maybe there might be a new community emerging by the next year. Or maybe we might have new um, volunteers that would join in our community. I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to, to meeting everyone very soon. Okay, so thank you. 